can pull it close to you. You, you can also pull it. Pull it up to you. I mean, pull it closer to you. Yo, That's right. Yo, yo. Uh, All right. So, my God, how are you doing one more time? Man, I'm blessed, my brother. You know, oh my God. more blessing to the man. Thank you so much that you made time to be able to come over and talk to us. It's my pleasure, Papa. It's oh, my pleasure. Gosh. Barry God, tell me, when were you born and where were you born? I was born 1955 in the island, blessed island of Jamaica. And maybe from that time till now, my, I have the vision to come home to see my fathers and my grandfathers and my niece and nephews. Interesting. So you were born in Jamaica, which parish of Jamaica? I was born in the east of Jamaica. No, they will call it the most blessed part of the island. Because up there, when people sick, we fix them up. Mm. So which parish is this? What's the name of the parish? St. Thomas. St. Thomas. St. Thomas. Mm. That mm. is the east of the highland. The hills of the highland. East, east of the highland. Interesting, man. Yo. Okay, so tell me, who were your parents and what were they doing for a living? Well, my father, he was a hard rounder. He do everything for a living. I think my mother was just a housekeeper, you know? Yes, back in those times. But also, a housekeeper have the big chores to do also. Mm -hmm. Was it a good family? Was it a bad family? Were you able to eat three times a day? Oh, Papa, I don't know what starvation is. Wow. Bless it, bless it to them. I've never seen hunger in my life. Never. I've seen hunger. You know, as my father is also a farmer, so... <laughs> there was no hunger. <laughs> oh, Papa, what hunger, Papa? <laughs> we was eating the best of everything, Papa. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, my God. So did you go to school? And which schools did you go to? Yes, I go to school in Jamaica. I go to um, Maran Bay High School and back into Yalas High School. Then as a small boy, I repatriate here to London. London? Yes. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. Ah, whoa. At what age did you get to London? Oh, I get here when I was about 17, going to 18 years old. Who took you to London? How did you get there? Oh, well, Jihad sent a blessing for me in Jamaica to mm. come and collect me to London. So I met this beautiful lady, yes, which is my best friend to date, mm. yes, mm. you know, so... We have a daughter. Oh, wow. Yeah, so with, wow. with my daughter, I get grandson, mm -hmm. and I get great-grandson. Oh, so wow. I am, I am truly blessed, Papa. Oh, truly so you are blessed. a great-grandfather. Oh, Papa, I'm so blessed. I'm blessed. I'm very blessed. Ah, wow. At my young age, I am a great-grandfather. You are. <laughs> Interesting. So, I mean, this woman that you met who took you to England, was she white or black? Oh, Papa, she wasn't white. She wasn't black. She was a... Indian. Indian. Yeah, Indian, uh, yes. Of oh. my own family state herself, you know? Mm. Yes, yeah, so it be so. How old was this woman when she met you at 17? Oh, Papa, well, she was very young. I was 17, she was about 20. Mm. Yes, she mm. wasn't any old woman, you oh, know? Well. No, a young woman. Same. Today she's there, very young and strong, same way. See, <laughs> see. So, obviously, your relationship with the, this woman did not work. What happened? Well, you know, Papa, in life, everybody stretch far different distance, mm. you know? So maybe the distance I was stretching wasn't compatible with her one, you know? Mm. And my aim is to find Africa, mm. matter what it costs. Mm. My aim was to find Africa. And then just not my aim, but I think I was a vessel that brought my forefathers back home that their spirit could rest in harmony because mm. you cannot live into a strange land you understand with any blessing you need to come home so i think i was a vessel that brought my forefathers home interesting but when i come here i end up love the place so mm. i've been going and coming i first came here 1986 1986? Yes. So wow. that was then the calling of the Rastaman movement was mm. moving all over. Mm. And then we have a BS here, the 12 tribe of Israel. Mm. Yeah, so it, that was, I came here July. So I mm. came for a celebration. Mm. 
Mm. You know, with Daddy Basco, you know, all the, the brothers, them, President Kex and all the rest of them, Cephas, Judah, Papa Zebi, oh, I can keep calling, calling, calling. That's 36 <laughs> years ago since you first came to Ghana. Yes, my love. 36. All right, before I look at Ghana, let me look at Jamaica. Yeah. Uh, you left Jamaica at the age of 17. Seven. What was Jamaica like at that time? Oh, my goodness, Papa. It's Hmm, Papa, and oh, it's beautiful place, oh Papa. Mm. It's beautiful. We don't have no red water there, and food. As I tell you, I've never no starvation in my life. Mm. We have abundance of everything there. More species than I've seen here in Africa. Ah, wow. Because you know, many different races of people come there, so they bring different fruits from. Mm. Oh my God, man! Mm. It's oh Papa. It's it's a place. To see, see and be whole. See, yes. see. So why did you leave it if it was this beautiful for England? As I assure you, mm. it was my spirit mm. of my forefathers. They need to come home. So I was the vessel to brought them home. See. And since I brought them, I have never left. Okay. So when you arrived in England at the age of 17, what were your expectations and what did you see when you entered England? Oh, Papa. It was a developing country at that time. I see. There wasn't any technology as it is now. Mm. So everybody was doing... I mean, those days, if you get a job, mm. they take you in and they show you how to do the work. Mm -hmm. But now, if you don't have book work, you can't get that same job. Mm. So it's a big change in that place. And the development is vast development i see mm -hmm. interesting now in england did you ever suffer some racism um racism papa i, I never really suffer anything i'm a free <laughs> ma, i'm a free-minded person and see. i get hard with everyone you see. know yes see. as you can see my complexion i get on with everyone see. i don't have any race or hate for anyone see you know but i know i am a black man that's right come from africa and my purpose in this life was to escort my four parents mm -hmm. back home mm -hmm. where they are now free and mm -hmm. enjoying them them liberty mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. <laughs> All right, so my guest in the studio is Barry Gard Osborne. Yes. Simply known as Barry Gard. Yo. And we are having a beautiful conversation. He was born and bred in Jamaica. By the age of 17, he found himself in England. And he was in England until he decided to visit Ghana. Yeah. Tell me, was Ghana the very first African country you ever visited? Um, to be quite honest, at my coming here, the first place I entered was Nigeria. Ah. Kano. Kano, okay. Yes, and there in Kano, I remember the sandstorm wasn't easy. Sandstorm? Oh, wow. my God, Papa. Wow. It wasn't easy. It stuck the plane there for about four hours. No what? movement. Yeah, oh, what? Papa. So I remember that one well. And from there, they clean up everything and I drop into ghana my god yes my god but when i drop here in ghana i see ghana is just a big version mm. of jamaica a war. because everything the Ghanaians do here is what the jamaicans do there mm. the way the bus move the way the people move the way oh papa i i can always said this is a big version of jamaica Big version of Jamaica. Yes. All right. So when you were in Nigeria, I mean, what was the experience like? How many days were you in Nigeria for? Oh, we we was just passing through for hours. Oh. Yes. So your hours. destination was actually Ghana. Uh, exactly. Through Nigeria. Through Nigeria. Why did you choose Ghana? Tell me. Oh, Papa, as I said, the forefathers, they are the one that do every chosen. I was just the vessel that brought them home. And now I am here, I can't leave here. Mm, I am right here. We have so many different countries right here in Africa. Yes. I mean, we have Benin, we have Gambia, we have Sierra Leone, and even Nigeria. But you decided that you were going to come to Ghana. Certainly there was a certain reasoning that went into that. 
What was the reason? I keep telling you, it's the spirit of the <laughs> forefathers that brought me here. Mm. The spirit of the forefather. You know, like Sankofa. Mm. Yeah, go back to your roots. Go back from where you came. For real? Yes. Before you came to Ghana, what did you know about Ghana? Um, I did not know much about Ghana. There's few of my friends, one of even my brother who came here first. And then, you know, like back home, we would sit down. If, if, for instance, you don't have money to go to the show, mm. to watch the show, you will pay for someone to go wow. and come back mm. and tell you every movement that happened on that flame. Interesting. So it's the same thing that is happening here. Interesting. You see, so our brother came. And then he come back, he relayed the story to a lot of us. Then we start to come in here very well. Then at, at the same time, we have the 12 tribe of Israel here. Right. You know, you know we still with Daddy Basco, mm. you know, and all the rest of brothers them. So it was a house for us to come. Mm. Daddy wanted down there in Rainbow Valley and all of that. So it was a home for us to come. Interesting. You know? Yeah. So the very first time he talked down right there in Ghana was 36 years ago. Yes. Oh gosh, 1986. Mm. And then he has been going and coming, but he's now fully settled here. Mm -hmm. We're going to get deeper into this. How many of you were born into your family in Jamaica? Oh my God, my father was a, a rampant. Mm, <laughs> a rampant? <laughs> <laughs> so I think I have about 20 something brothers and sisters. Interesting. Yes. Powerful. You know, powerful man. Yes. Twenty something. Ah, po very powerful man. Were they all from one woman? Oh, Papa, I said he was a rampant. Rampant man. <laughs> this is three FM. He was a rampant man. <laughs> this is three FM. <laughs> all right, man. So, are you in contact with all your twenty something brothers and sisters? Oh, away from the ones them that die, but we are constant. Well, you know. Give up, big, big up the Facebook, mm. yeah, and the WhatsApp, mm. yeah, because those keep us visually in contact, spiritually in contact, or oh, more contact mm. than if we never have those devices. Mm. Yes. Mm. So, what did your brother tell you about Ghana that was so interesting to you at the time? Oh, it's the same way as I am saying to you. It's a big version of Jamaica. Oh. So when I came here, I see it was a big version of Jamaica. Mm. And when I came here, I stay at um, Abeka. Abeka, okay. Yeah, Abeka, Tassano, mm. all those places. Ah, you know, from there to Achimoto, mm. you know? So, oh, I was enjoying. Papa, mm. the place was just like Jamaica. Jamaica. Yes. Were there other Jamaicans here when you came? Early Jamaicans living here? Yes. Not as much as now, mm. but Jamaicans was here. Which Jamaicans did you meet here? Um... At those times, you don't really meet too much Jamaican. My, my people that used to be around me that show me the way mm. is mostly Ghanaian. Mm. Particular one brother, Cephas Judah. Oh. Yes, he's a brother. If mm. when I am sick, he would look after me. Wow. And all that, he show me good way. Mm. Then we have James there, we have Steve there. It's mm. one family. I see. But they adopt me. Well, the mommy adopt me in the family, so see. they become my brothers. A lot of Jamaican people have had some brush with the law, especially with the police and ganja. Did you have to go through this too? Oh, Papa, I, I don't have those kind of problems. The mm. police have to see me and know I'm a Rasta man. Mm. I'm not having any big portion of anything, so love mm. me with my little thing. <laughs> you understand? This is 3FM. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting, the police must allow me with my little thing. Uh, I don't have, I don't have any big problem. I'm mm. not a thief, I'm not a murderer, mm. I know they cause any problem. Mm. I am more like a builder, mm. you know, yeah, mm. a teacher, you mm. know, the youths, them who figure they don't have something to do, I will show them that, oh, Papa, you are here. Even take up little farming, you'll be surprised how much you can make out of just that. 
Okay. You understand? Yes, so, that, that is true. Yes. Now, when it comes to criminal activities in Africa, um, so many people will look up to uh, Nigeria. They will say, oh, Nigerians, a lot of Nigerian people are into criminal activities in, and all that. As to whether that is true or false, that is what a lot of Africans have in their mind about uh, fellow Africans, Nigeria. Now, when you go international, people also see Jamaica in that kind of light. Mm. Do you agree with that? Oh, Papa, it's not like that. But basically, they pick on the Jamaican because most of them, like they said, would be smoking their little herb. Mm. Away from that, they are not criminals. Okay. They are not murderers. They mm. do what they have to do to survive. The Nigerians, I would not look upon them and discriminate them because none of them have caused any problem to me. Mm. So, mm. therefore, you cannot discriminate what you don't know about. And as far as I understand, even our president said, as long as we are a black man, we are an African. That's true. So we have to live like Africans mm. and know that we are brothers and sisters. For real. Yes, because... For real. It's not that just Nigerian come to Ghana. Mm. A lot of Ghanaians is there in Nigeria also. So therefore, in South Africa, you look anywhere, in London, China, all over, whichever way for you to find a little bread, you will be there. Have you visited some other African countries since you came to Ghana? Oh, I... I used to go to some on my way, like Egypt and all those places and, you know, certain mm -hmm. little places around. But the spirit, it has brought me to Ghana. Mm. Mm. Interesting. Interesting. Barrigard is my guest right here in the African history class, and we are having a very interesting <laughs> conversation. Now, Barrigard, tell me, when you came to Ghana, at what point did you decide that you wanted to make Ghana your home and you wanted to live here? Oh, Papa, I swear because of the first time I've landed, mm. the spirit collect me. Mm. Nothing I could do about it. Mm. Yes, I was home. Mm. Yes, I was very much home. I see. You know, even though at those times things was very hard. I'm not saying it was easy, it was mm. hard, but we were surviving, surviving better than we are surviving now, sir. Mm. Yes. I am told that you met President J.J. Rollins, is that true? Um, he's someone who inspires me, mm. yes, and I think he inspires a lot of Rastas to come back home mm. to our land, yes, so, yes, I met him, mm. yes. And when you met him, what did he tell you? What did you tell him? Oh, <laughs> what I tell him is that, oh, he's my brother. Mm. Yes, <laughs> and I give thanks for him. That's right. Yes, to invite us that we are keep coming here to Ghana. Mm. Yes, so that was it. And those days, it was okay. Yes, a lot of people used to come here more than they are coming now. So those days, are the, most of those people, as far as i concerned, they are coming with the intention to help Mama Africa mm. for development. Mm. They are not coming with any bad intention towards Mama Africa. That's because right. Because this is how we see Africa, mm. as our mother. What's your relationship with other Jamaicans here in Ghana? Oh, as I get on very well with everybody, not just Jamaican, but I get on well with most everybody. Mm. Yes. In the event of death, where would you want to be buried? In Jamaica, in England, where? Oh, Papa, would you like to take my body from here when I fight my way to come home? I am home. So where would you want my body to go? Wow. My body have to be here. Mm. Yes, my children, they are here. Mm. Yes, and my great-grandchildren, they will be living here. It's not be like I am by myself. Mm. Alone, I have five children. You understand? So, <laughs> and they are growing. So basically, where is home now for me? Interesting. And you see, as you call the time that I'm coming here, you see the years. Oh, 
so where is my home now? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Certainly. So what do you do in Ghana? What kind of business do you do? Or oh. are you just relaxing and taking a pension? Oh, sometimes I do little farming. Okay. Yeah, sometimes I rent properties and that. Sometimes I run a, a little spot. Mm. You see, I have to find a way to survive. Oh, so you have properties here? Oh, plenty of properties. Yeah, yeah, I'm told that you are rich. Well, the richness was when I first came. Mm. I spent it out amongst my brothers and sisters who never do anything with it. But mm. Yes, I have few little properties around, you know, and I prefer to buy land put down than buy a car to drive. Mm. Yes, I don't like that one. Mm. I prefer the property. How many now, houses do you have? Oh, Papa, I, 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 <laughs> I have a few. Mm. Yes, I have a few. Are they up to five? Oh, I think they were up to this, my little boy have mm. his own place. Oh, he has his own house. Oh, so wow. basically, you know, I have to be thinking what is going to happen to them if I am not here. Mm. And then... If it's land, I would mm. buy land down for them. Because mm. mm. when, they, when they grow of age, they won't be able to buy any land here. Wow. As you can notice what is going on. That's the, right. The Chinese itself coming to buy all our land here. Mm. So if I don't buy something down for my children, when they grow up here, they will not have any land to buy. Mm. Nothing for them to get. Mm. So, uh, it's, it's all about Sankofa. Sankofa. So, yes. so your houses, are they up to about five? Oh, I would say about, uh, yes. About five? Uh, mm. Interesting. Yes. And you have a pub as well. Oh, well, you know, it's nothing big. You know, everything is small, small. Mm. You see? How did you make your money? Before you came to Ghana. Oh, Papa, you wouldn't like to hear that story. It's um, about um, it's, yeah. it's working hard. Mm. And in Britain, back in those days, you get the chance. You work hard, you save your money, then you buy properties over there. Mm. And then when you decide to come to Ghana now, then mm. you sell all those properties. Then you will have more than enough money to come and do what you are doing. What kind of work did you do? What kind of hard work was this? Oh, I am an engineer. I am a TV, radio, computer engineer. Wow. Yes, that's my job. I wow. used to have my business over there. My cars, them go around doing servicing and all of that. Oh, I, if, I, if I was a big man, I was a big man there. Mm. Yes. Do you still repair TVs and radios and all that? Um, those things now I leave for the small people. Because, mm. you know, after a certain time, you need a high. You see, the highs mm. is very powerful. Yes, yes. And you need the highs. Yes. Because you may have a circuit board. And you need to use the height to see, yes. and you can't see it. Oh. Then it doesn't make sense to you. And you cannot use magnifying glass. Oh. It does not the same as the eye. Oh, wow. Yes, the height is very powerful. Wow. Yes. Wow. <laughs> so it comes with age? It's come with age. My God. How much money did you bring into Ghana? Oh, Papa. I bring, I, 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 oh, I can't even count, but I bring enough to look after myself, mm. to buy land and, you know, the rest of it, was, and build house and all the rest of it. Was it up to about 50,000 pounds? Oh, that one was small. I was. <laughs> I was. This is 3FM. <laughs> yes, that was small. How about 100,000 pounds? Oh. That one too small? Uh, that one was small because, you know... This is 3FM. <laughs> I, am, I am going and I'm coming and That's I'm right. working mm -hmm. and, I, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm over there, self, I'm renting, so, you know, yes. I do I, understand. I, I, I would say maybe about five, six going up small, yes. Mm. Yes. Interesting. Now, now, you tell me about your faith. What is your faith? What do you believe in? Jesus Christ, Mohammed, no, Ayla Selassie. Yes, Ayla Selassie is where I believe. That's where I get my hope, my inspiration, mm. my power, my everything from. So you're a Rasta? Yes, I'm more than a Rasta self. I do not follow Buddha. <laughs> 
and all those people, are you Christian, are they Christians, the Muslim, no. <clears throat> because Rasta, if you notice Rasta, we are not in any war with no one. <clears throat> we do not fight war with anyone. We are not killing our brother over there any place. So I like that thing very well. <clears throat> I don't have to be rise up killing my own brothers and my sister, starving them, no, no. So. I like the Rasta easy. So have you ever worn dreadlocks? Oh, Papa, it's because of my time come, when Ja okay. take the dreadlocks from my head. Oh, but, oh all right. I was a powerful dreadlocks man, a god. Wow. Most of my brother here, they used to call me a Kwesi Basa Basa. I see. Because I never play. I am a teacher. A Kwesi you know? Basa Basa. Yes, mm. so I am a hard worker. Mm. So, you know. That's how it work out. Interesting. Yeah. So you don't believe in Jesus Christ? Oh, I don't have nothing I want to do with him. Mm. Yes. You have nothing to do with Jesus Christ? No, I don't want nothing to do with that one. You mean the white Jesus Christ that these people portray and all of that? No, mm. I'm a black man. I'm the son of a black man. Mm. My great-grandfather was black, and before them was black. Mm. So, you know, how can I run to another nation to serve somebody who is even not my complexion? No. Mm. Rasta man and black man is one people together. Mm. We are the builders of Africa, mm. and we are the future of Africa. If you were not Rasta, what would you have been? Christian or Muslim? No, I don't think I would have been anything. <laughs> yes, and I wouldn't want to be anything. This yes. is 3FM. <laughs> Barry God is my guest right here. We're having some interesting conversation. Oh, Lord. The first time he came into this country was from Jamaica and went through England 36 years ago. Today, he's Ghanaian. In fact, he has a Ghanaian citizenship. And he is based right here in Ghana, doing his businesses in Ghana. He has children right here in Ghana, and he wants to be buried right here in Ghana, Ghana. when he goes home. Yo. Oh, gosh. Yo. Now, tell me about your romance. When you came here, did you have a Ghana woman that used to warm your bed? Well, you know it is, I'm a God. As you can see, the functioning of God is the line. So God have to have always have a little comforter. Mm. But before I reach to that stage, I would like to thank the president mm. <coughs> for my passport, mm. my citizenship of serving the country such a long time. Mm. Yeah, so I would like to serve, big up the president because... You know, he keeps saying, as long as you are a black man, you are an African. That's and right. And he proved that one, to mm. know that we are family. Mm. Not just an African, but we are family. You mm. are sitting in front of me. You could be my blood, but have we test to see if your blood flow through my body? That's right. We haven't. So, therefore, you could be one of my long-lost family. Mm. And I could be one of your long-lost family. That's true. Yo. Mm. So, you have a Ghana woman. Yo. Mm. And you have five children. Yo. I can see. Is this the last one or there's another one? I see a, a four-year-old, five-year-old. Is he six? Is he five? Oh, it'll be, it be five soon. Five years. Yes. All right. Yeah, this is my last one so far. Are you going to have more? Um, You know, the country has changed. Mm. And I would like to do well for my children. I mm -hmm. would not like to fail them. Mm -hmm. So basically, I would not take on more burden than I can manage. Mm. So the burden I have now, I can barely manage, but it's affordable. And you are 68 now? 68. 68. to come, yes. Interesting. Yes. All right. But you do you hope to have more children or...? Um, you know, children don't come from man. Mm. They come from the Creator. Mm. And He was the one who make the decision. Mm. Whichever one we might talk or want to do, the final come from the Irata, which is His Imperial Majesty. Mm. Yes, to me. Interesting. Yes. Interesting. But regard is my guest, and we're having an interesting conversation all the way from Jamaica through England and mm -hmm. now in Ghana, mm -hmm. a Ghanaian citizen, mm -hmm. and is enjoying his citizenship, and he loves Ghana. How different is Jamaica from Ghana? As I said to you before, 
Away from the little petty violence that those people is going on over there, there's no come different whatsoever. Mm. You go out there, I will see man like you, Black Rasta, mm. before my eyes, I will say, hey, Black Rasta, but no, you are Jamaica Black Rasta, you are not the Ghana Black Rasta, but people do look the same mm. over there. Mm. Yes. Wow, interesting, interesting. So now that you're based in Ghana, and you're doing your businesses and all that. Uh, do you once in a while go to Jamaica or England? When was the last time you were in England? Oh. When was the last time you were in Jamaica? Oh, Papa, that was about 18 years ago I've been in England. Mm. I've never fly on a plane unless I am flying in Africa. Mm. Yes, I never have the spirit of wanting to go back when I struggled so hard to get here in the first place. Wow. You see? How about Jamaica? Um, I've never go back within longer time than 18 years. Wow. Yes, my hope and inspiration was here to come to Africa. And even the land I saw in my vision as a young man over there is the land I built my house on in Africa. <clears throat> You understand? So it has been a, a, a to return to return where you was once taken as a slave to the white man and all of that, Papa. It's not easy. It's not easy. So when I am coming, I wasn't just coming with my vessel on top of me, as I said. I was coming with maybe four or five hundred years of forefathers on my back, bringing them home. Everybody who was repatriated to Africa, to Ghana, uh, will tell you that, well, they had so many expectations when they were coming, and some will tell you that some of these expectations were not met. Tell me what disappointed you about Ghana. Ah, the false love. <clears throat> the false love. Fake love. Yes. Mm. A brother will come to you because you see you have money. He will do all manner of evil just to extract that money mm. and that doesn't give him the money mm. it's love that give him the money oh, it's wow. love that give him the help i have helped so many people here and it's not because they drag it from me it's because i freely give it to them you understand mm. because that's his love tell me your experience yes. with fake love Fake love is no love whatsoever. You love a brother, you have him, you feed him, you close him, you give him money, you do everything to him. But at the same time, when it comes, he's the same way he want to kill you. Oh, really? Yes, yeah, so it's no love. I mean, in Jamaica, it's a different liberty. You deal with a brother, and your brother, you, you and him, you know, he take a gun and he shot you, and you're dead. But here... Is the spiritual warfare and all of that, you know? Mm. That come up now, a man figure say yes, let me take you to the shrine. And that may be knowing that maybe you are even powerful than the shrine. Mm. So when he go to the shrine, he get himself involved. Mm. So it's those kind of fake love. Are uh, Jamaicans the worst killers on earth? I wouldn't think so. I think the white people is the worst killers and hurt, especially the Americans, those drunk up people, I think. They are the one who force Jamaican and give the Jamaican the weapon to do what they are doing, force them into the crime. Because, you know, it's a small island. You could pick Jamaica and you throw it here in Ghana. You don't even know where, you, not even a magnifying glass could find it. Mm. Yes, it's such a small place. I had you on a certain platform that I found myself, uh, and um, you were talking, uh, you were vexed about, you know, some things that were happening with the Black Star Line, I mean, Credit Union, and all that, and your voice notes were all over the place. You were mad and very angry at some things going on. Tell me, what, what was going on? Hmm... That one, I prefer not to comment on it. Mm. Yes. Mm. I prefer not to comment on it. Okay. Yes. All right. That is fair. But regardless, my girls. This is 3FM. <laughs> and we're having a conversation. <laughs> now, tell me about reggae music. Is it some kind of music that you love? I love reggae music. Mm. It is the music that gives you the spirit 
Papa, reggae music. Have you noticed now, Ghanaian? Most of the church now, they only play reggae music. That is true. It is what give you this spirit, Papa. You can, oh, Papa, reggae music is the spirit. And it is not a Jamaican music. Mm. It's an African music. Mm. It's only that we Jamaican develop it up to the level that it is. And that's why the people acknowledge Jamaican as the music city of mm. the world. Mm. Because any music at all you bring there, we can make it very nice for you. Any music whatsoever. What's your experience with reggae? Were you ever working with any reggae band? Did you ever sing reggae? Did you play any reggae instrument? What's your experience? No, I no, me, me was not a musician. Mm. <clears throat> but that don't mean I cannot sing. There okay. is no Jamaican who cannot sing. Okay. But I was, my mind was set for different things. Okay. Those days, I would like to be in the farm with my father. Yes, you know, because the farm, <laughs> that farm, Papa, is a relaxing thing, very mm. relaxing. And mm. the money you can get out of it is only if you are lazy, you don't realize how the, because the farm is what pe feed the people. People can, oh, Papa, even if you're a president, you have to eat cocoa yam sometime, mm. or plantain, or rice, or something, and those things does not come by just throwing them down there. It's the farmer that produces those things. That's true. Yes. That's very true. So, so every Jamaican can sing? Every Jamaican can sing. Okay, sing me any song of your choice, Barry God. Hey! Mm. Papa, I am here sitting with Black Rasta, having an interview with Black Rasta. Papa Gaddy, I'm the best in the area. Ah, 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 I am the best in the area. Singing music for Black Rasta. <laughs> <laughs> this is PFM. Very good! Osborne, oh my God! This is... Osborne is my girl. Every Jamaican can sing. Ras Amdizian can sing. Empress Levi can sing. Every Jamaican can sing. Not two years about them thing, the man. All right, so we're going to be winding up right now, mm. my regard. Now, tell me this. When you heard that your father and mother passed, I'm sure they died in Jamaica. Yes. Where were you? Did you go to the funeral? No. When, when I was in London, my father passed. Mm. Yes, but I have this kind of thing that if you are alive, I can do something for you. I am there with you. But if you are passed, where well, I'm just going to come and see a corpse, I don't want to see that one. My mother died about two years ago also. I didn't go to see that one. I remember her year the way she was and the way she is in my mind. I don't want to see any corpse. So my grandmother died also at 110 years old. I didn't want to see the corpse. Yes, it is, it is my way, my belief. And that one 
keep my head free than the stress and the haga. Yes, so mm -hmm, I never go for that reason. It's not that I could not afford. I have many sisters and brothers around the globe that would gladly buy a ticket for me. That wasn't the problem. It, it's just that I don't want to see. Did your sisters and brothers feel a way that you didn't come to see your mother? Oh, no, 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 no. Nothing like that one. Nothing like that. I don't wish that this one would happen to you, but if you happen to lose your child, a child, would you see the cops? My own child. Your own child. I don't sure that will happen in my lifetime. Mm. Ja won't go back to that kind of level for me. Cause that one would be a very disturbing thing. Yes. So I don't think Ja would have put me through that tribulation. Mm. Yes. And if, if this happens to you, what would you do? Would you see the cops? I would have to do what I have to do. Mm. Yes. And what is this that and you then want to do? I would have to cross that bridge when mm. it come to it. What do we get there? Yeah. All right. This is 3FM. Barry God is my girl. He says he doesn't want to see no cops. He cannot do anything for any cops. What he can do is for the living, Yo. not for the cops. Yo. So he says, let the dead bury the dead. Mm -mm -mm. This is 3FM. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you miss your father sometimes? Do you have dreams about your mother since they died? Did you ever have any dreams about them? But, what was the dream about? But they're already inside of me. Mm. So there's nothing to miss. Mm. Yes, they are inside my children. Mm. There's nothing to miss. This is deep. Yes, nothing this is deep. to miss. Mm. Yes. When you finally go, Barry, 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 I almost said Barry White, you know, <laughs> Barry God, tell me, how would you want to be remembered? Me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> One day when you go, maybe 100 years later or 200 years later when you go. Anyway, at what age do you want to go home? Oh, Papa, I don't have no say in that one. Mm. All I know, when my work is over, I will fly away home. Mm. Yes, I will fly away home when my work is over. Mm. Every man born from a woman born to die. So why should I fear death? Mm. That is not my hand. Mm. That could be my beginning. Mm. So I have no fear of death. Okay. Yes. Mm. Mm. I most have fear of living. Oh, I'm going to live with my brother and my sister. But that, I have no fear of that one. So when you go finally home, what would you want to be remembered for? Oh, Papa, that would be for the one that left behind. They remember me what they want to remember me. As far as I'm concerned, I won't even remember them when I'm gone. Wow. So, <laughs> you understand? So, 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 so you would not mind that you don't care what they think about you when you're gone? Oh, it's not that I don't mind, I mm. don't care. But, you know, I say blessed is the man who walk it not in the council of the ungodly. Mm. And those who sit up in the seat of sinners. Mm. So if I am not living like those people, what is mine? Nobody can take it from me. Mm. Yeah. What is your concept of life and death? When you die, would you resurrect? What happens to you when you die, Barry God? Well, me like this, the one you are talking to now mm. is me. Mm. The body only carry this mm. vice that you are hearing. Mm. When this body die, mm. this vice leave this body mm. and will find another body somewhere. Mm. So it's not that the, the vice is my body. It's like a planting. You chop it down or a banana. Mm. Next minute, phew, and next one bloom up beside it. Mm. You chop it down, mm. you heat, and next one bloom up beside it. Mm. Such is life. So you believe in reincarnation, that the body doesn't really die? The body would die, but the spirit would find another body and get they, into? It's as according to the scripture. You know, Jah promised man everlasting life. Mm. Yes, and like you go to bed tonight, your spirit leave your body. You find somebody chasing you over there with a gun. Mm. Are you dropping off a precipice? 
that was just the spirit. Mm. The body was left there in the bed. Mm. All you have to do is make sure you get back to that body before that spirit drop off of that cliff. Otherwise, you'll never get back there. Wow. <laughs> this is 3FM. <laughs> this is deep. Mm, 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 mm. God <laughs> is talking to us. <laughs> wow. Do you believe in heaven and hell? Heaven and hell. We are living in it right now, yeah. Which one are you living in? We are here in heaven and we are here in hell. Ah. Yes. Okay. Which one is the hell here? Well, the hell is when you're in, you know, dire spear and all that, you know? And the heaven is when, you know, you find good people around you. Yes. But you know, most of the time you find bad people around you more than good people. Mm. Yes. So, so you don't believe that there's a place called heaven when you die, you'd go in there, you'll see angels in there, you would see so many wonderful things there, nothing like that? Oh, that is the white man's script, you know? Mm. <laughs> there may be a place like that, but I've never died before, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this is 3FM. This is 3FM. <laughs> But regard, do you believe in ghosts? Do you believe that some people die and come out again and they are dead? Oh, people? definitely. I've seen them plenty. You've seen doppies? Oh, Papa, mm -hmm. I see them plenty. My spirit is strong. And you know, those is people that have something still to do. They never finish. You mm -hmm. see them roam around. Oh, I've seen them, yes. You saw, you saw them right there in Ghana or in Jamaica? Oh, even here in Ghana. Yes, wow. they are there plenty, roaming around. But... True, I have no problem with them. I don't mind them. How do you recognize them? Oh, you can see them. Mm. It's a spiritual feeling. Mm. And you, you know, you, you sometimes, you see them. Mm. You see them, Papa. Are you able to tell whether I'm a ghost or a, a man? Oh, Papa, you beside me right now, mm. as God into my spirit, mm. you're a man. A Maybe man. you have bad vibes with you, but still, before me, you're a man. This is 3FM. <laughs> By regard, are we having a beautiful conversation? Oh, my God, have mercy. All right, man. Okay, so we are winding up. Barry, Barry, Barry. <laughs> Do you have a favorite reggae artist? Out of all the millions of Jamaican... Jamaican artists, yes. My favorite reggae artist is Lucky Dube. Oh, really? Yes. I, wow. That man... <laughs> wow. Have you really listened to Lucky Dube music? He's just like Bob Marley mm. and Peter Tosh, Bonnie Wheeler, those ones. But Lucky Dube, huh, I don't know. The spirit of his music always inspired me. Mm. You see? Yes. Not saying our Jamaica artist does not inspire yeah, right. me. Mm. But if you say my favorite artist, mm. one I can listen to a couple of albums straight, 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 is Lucky Dube. Interesting. Which yeah. one of his songs is your favorite? Oh, I like all of them. Interesting. Trust me. Mm. Like mm. all mm. of them. Every one of them. My God. Yes. Mm -mm -mm. I'm going to be 